Hello and welcome to the Juniper Network's Thin Client Best Practices video demo. I'm Kevin Fletcher and today we're going to show you a variety of ways to support Thin Client computing through the Juniper Network's Secure Access SSL VPN. We'll start by taking a look at our embedded RDP client. This client is provisioned on the fly with no pre-installed software. And as you can see, you can publish a specific desktop or just a subset of applications to any remote access end user. This client is Windows based and is invoked via ActiveX with a Java fallback mechanism for those that don't support ActiveX. We also have a similar solution for Citrix. Again, desktops and applications are available as well as single sign-on and a variety of other customizable options. Again, this is installed with no pre-installed software, it's installed on the fly. Here's the admin console and you can see under the roles we've enabled terminal services with a variety of bookmarks. You'll also see single sign-on has been configured here as well. Here you can see we've also added the list to a published application so that that can be invoked rather than a full desktop. Next we'll take a look at the same client which is again provisioned using ActiveX with the Java fallback. However instead of just provisioning a Windows client we can also provision a Java client on the fly should the Windows client not be able to be installed or ActiveX is not available in the system. In this scenario we're using a Java RDP applet which we found from sourceforge.net. In this scenario, the applet was actually uploaded to the Juniper Network's SSL VPN and is hosted there and provisioned in a web page. Uh, essentially, you upload the applet and generate a bunch of HTML. For the most part, this is all generated automatically. You just plug in things like the server and port, and even those can also be carried over from the actual resource profile bookmark. There's also a fallback mechanism here to always use the applet or only use the, all the applet as a fallback. Here's the same applet now uploaded again to the SSL VPN. However, in this scenario, it's just an applet. It doesn't attempt to install any type of Windows client. It's just the applet hosted in a web page on the SSL VPN. This again requires no nothing to be installed. All it requires is a JVM on the end user PC. Now we'll take a look at our Layer 3 technology, which is called Network Connect. Essentially, this creates a full Layer 3 VPN using SSL or ESP that connects the end user's PC onto the remote network. Since this is a true Layer 3 tunnel, it enables any application, such as Microsoft Terminal Services or a Citrix Program Neighborhood, to be instantiated and run over the VPN tunnel to the remote network. In this scenario, the user has the application already pre-installed on his PC and he just loads it up after the Network Connect tunnel is set up and uh, connects directly to the network as if he was already there plugged into the LAN. From an administration perspective, uh, Network Connect is, en is enabled for the user's role and a Network Connect profile is configured to give the user a remote IP address and also define any transport mechanism. Uh, of course, all of the options are available since this is a true end-user program. 
Um, so you'll see a variety of options are certainly available with any application that you run over Network Connect. Now we'll, now we'll take a look at our Citrix Java ICA or JICA. Essentially this is the Citrix Java applet version. Um, this has been downloaded from Citrix.com and uploaded to a web server running behind the Juniper Network's SLVPN. Uh, this could also be uploaded as we indicated before with the Java RDP applet um, and hosted on the SLVPN. However, this demonstration is just to contrast the differences of hosting an applet versus rewriting an applet. In both, both cases, the applet socket calls are rewritten and secured using SSL. From an administrator perspective, all that's required is a bookmark created for the user's role, and the role must allow Java applets. And on the backend web server, essentially this is just a standard web server. Um, the applet files, the jar files have been uploaded there, and there's some HTML that invokes them and specifies a few applet parameters. Now we'll take a look at Citrix Web Interface, formerly Enfuse. The best practice to support Web Interface in this scenario is to use the rewriter so that no, nothing needs to be pre-installed and to enable the Java ICA client for the Citrix Web Interface. So you'll see we log the user into Web Interface here without prompting them for a password. That's because single sign-on is enabled. And you'll see here the web interface then provisions the Java applet on the fly. And in this scenario, Seamless Windows has been enabled. On the administration side, again, all that's required is a web bookmark. And to get single sign-on, we've created a single sign-on policy. This includes both a trigger URL and a post URL. It also includes a variety of post URL attributes. This information was retrieved by viewing the source for the web interface login screen. And the single sign-on is flexible so that it can authenticate a user into just about any form-based um, web authentication portal. And again, you'll see here that the user has gone in and has enabled the client for Java for web interface. Next, we'll take a look at something brand new from Juniper. This is available with IV 6.2 and later. Um, this is called Application Publishing for Citrix. Uh, essentially, in this scenario, uh, the Juniper SA replaces the web interface portal and speaks directly to the backend MetaFrame presentation servers using the XML interface on port 80. When a user logs in, he's mapped into a role on the SA and that role has various uh, bookmarks enabled, one of which could be the application publishing bookmark. And in this scenario, the SA then on the user's behalf connects to the backend MetaFrame presentation server, downloads all of the published applications and bookmarks through the XML interface, and then displays them here on the IVE portal. Single sign-on, of course, is also enabled, and a variety of other customizable options are also available. Much like we've done for all of the other uh, terminal services solutions, we can not only do single sign-on, but we can also provide a Java applet fallback mechanism here. So in this scenario, you can fall back to Java RDP or fall back to Citrix Jika, and then you, your users can then access the application. The value in using the seamless fallback is that administrator can configure one bookmark or one role bookmark and users from any web browser with any OS can then access the resource. And should they not be able to install a Windows-based client, it will automatically fall back uh, and use the Java applet. So Mac OS and Linux users, when they go home or start using a different PC, they don't need to do something different. They just go to the same bookmark and can access all of the resources they need. This concludes our Thin Client Best Practices video demo. I hope you found this informative. Thank you for your time.